Before I begin today's video, if you want to support Kim Klasik for Congress out there in Baltimore, Maryland, do so through the link in the description box below. Yes, this is an ad, but it's an ad for good. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today I bring you a recap of the RNC, the Republican National Convention, day two. This event was fantastic yet again the first night i loved it the production value was a 100 and it was the same thing here again tonight i'm talking about the production was so good you can package this as a dvd box set and not buy it straight away it's like a documentary a movie it was really good as a matter of fact Give me the box DVD set with Nick Sandman's autograph on it. I'll get to his speech in a minute because he was here tonight. Now, the convention opened up with a prayer from a Mexican-American pastor by the name of Nora Orbazo. Hopefully, I didn't butcher her name. Um, she did pretty good. The only complaint that I have for the entire night is when she said we should pray for Jacob Blake, the guy that got shot out there in Kenosha. Now... I'm not saying don't pray for everybody and that certain people don't deserve. Everybody deserves prayer, but to name him specifically was kind of a turnoff. You could have said, let's pray for all those affected by violence all over the country. That would have been a little bit better to say his name was kind of off putting, but that is my only complaint of the entire night. However, the issues of rioting and looting and whatnot are the elephant in the room. And I think Trump addressed that without addressing it directly. Um, there was a story of a man by the name of John Ponder, black male, who was a three-time felon. His most recent arrest was for bank robbery. And the story that they show on camera, again, great production value, was of him going to the penitentiary and turning his life around after he found Christ, after he got saved. And it's a legitimate thing. He now has a business or a foundation where he helps ex-cons with re-entry into society. He also befriended the FBI agent that arrested him originally. You know, they have dinner together. They, you know, are actually real friends. So he has really turned his life around, really become a different person than the guy that he was. And Trump gave him a pardon right there on the spot. And it was great to see his face just, you know, just all the emotion in him. It was a really good moment. So you got a full pardon. You turn his life around. That is the essence of the First Step Act and trying to give ex-cons a second chance in society. That was a really good montage. That was a really good moment right there. Now, in a surprising moment for me, Rand Paul came out to speak for Donald Trump. Now, I didn't really know that Rand Paul would do this. So, yeah, it was really surprising. But what Rand spoke about was just some factual things that nobody can deny. Uh, number one, if you don't know, Rand Paul is an ophthalmologist. That means he does eye surgery. Not the guy that, you know, takes to see with your 2020 or whatever. Nah, he actually works on your eyes. Um, and he said that Trump sponsored two of his medical missions to Guatemala and Haiti, where he does free eye surgeries long before he ran for president. You're talking about years ago. So... Trump is a philanthropist, has been that way for a very long time. This is before any kind of politics. So it wasn't even, oh, you know, quid pro quo. He was just doing it because he wanted to. And he also gave Trump credit for being anti-war. This is a very overlooked thing. And I thank Rand Paul for pointing that out because Trump just recently said he's going to pull troops from Afghanistan and Iraq. And he didn't get involved with Iran as far as any war. There was one uh, strike on Syria, but nobody even got hurt. He's been an anti-war president, unlike a Joe Biden who voted for the Iraq war, who would be a war hawk. Same thing with Hillary, I mean, Hillary Clinton. Okay, so Rand Paul did a great job speaking for Donald Trump and just giving straight facts about what he stands for. Obviously, they're not going to always agree, and that's fine. That's just human nature. But the things that he said about Trump, nobody can deny. In a very proud moment for me, I was able to see Bryson Gray and a lot of other people that, you know, had cameo appearances in the video about Americans being able to get back to work, cutting the red tape, cutting the regulation. I really appreciated that moment. And that's one thing that I saw all throughout the convention last night and also the first night, which was regular American people out there. 
you know, we're not necessarily relying upon celebrities and actors and whatnot. I mean, you may have some celebrities that come and speak and that's fine, but it's not relying upon that. You are having regular people and they're giving the message of optimism. That's also a main thing that I saw was American optimism. That was a theme and it was done very well. It was not all sad and mad and doom and gloom and all of this and that. It just wasn't that. So I appreciate the RNC, the Republican Party for doing this. Now, there was one very graphic part of the RNC, and that was when Abby Johnson spoke. Abby Johnson used to be a director over at Planned Parenthood, and she spoke about how she was very young, naive, kind of, you know, bright eyed, bushy tail. And Planned Parenthood came to her, recruited her, talking about, oh, we want to have abortion, be safe and rare, all, this, all these lies, really. And she bought into it, thinking that she'd be doing something noble. But what really ended up happening was that Planned Parenthood wanted her to increase abortion numbers because that's their bread and butter. That's how they make their money. That's what she was actually told, that the abortion is really the, the key industry over at Planned Parenthood, they'll say, oh, we give you like a thousand services. Abortion is just one. All right. So if you have how many millions of services, I'm exaggerating, but if you have so many other services, why can't you just cut one? If you have 100 things you do at Planned Parenthood and that's why they're essential and that's why they got to be funded, just cut one of them and keep the other ones and we're fine. But they don't want to do that because they know the bulk of their money, the mo most of their money comes from the abortion industry. It's simple. But she had a very graphic, um, you know, remembrance of abortion. She said that she saw a spine of a baby get sucked out of the womb and into a tube or some kind of instrument. Like she witnessed the spine being sucked out. She also said how they, you know, have the, the body parts of babies and they put them back together. I mean, it, very graphic. It, it kind of makes you sick. But at the same time, you got to hear it straight from an insider or a former insider about how Planned Parenthood is really sick, demonic and evil. Now, the speech of the night for me was Nick Salmon. Oh, my goodness. This was the best speech. And if you guys don't know who he is, I'll give you a brief recap. Um, back in 2019, what was it like January, like early 2019, you had a bunch of Catholic high school kids from Cumberton, Kentucky that went on a field trip. As a matter of fact, it was a great segue because they were there for a March for Life. They were there for an anti-abortion march. And as they were waiting to get on their bus to go back to the hotel or to go back to where they live, they were on the steps of the Capitol and they were getting a bunch of uh, abuse and harassment from those that were surrounding them. You know, some of the black Hebrew Israelites and then the so-called native elder because they were white and they had on MAGA hats, right? Now, Nick Salmon is just standing there minding his business. Here comes the so-called elder, which, by the way, Salmon called a professional protester. That's probably appropriate. And start banging the drum in his face, all this and that. And then that little moment right there of Nick Salmon just standing there minding his own business went viral. And his life got turned upside down. Uh, people on the media talking about he has a punchable face and he's a little twerp and wipe that grin off his face. He should get doxxed. They threatened him. They, they threatened his parents. They threatened his school. He had to close the school. It was crazy. And during his talk, when he went right back to D.C., right back to the Capitol, you know, with, with the gray suit and the red tie, what he was saying is that there was a word for what was happening to him. It's called being canceled. It's called being null and void. You're no longer even really a person. And he was talking about the media being so ravenous, so bloodthirsty to try to attack Trump that they have no problem ruining the life of a kid from Kentucky, which is what they tried to do. And I like how at the end of it, he put on his MAGA hat triumphantly. Like I was cheering like I was at a basketball game and this, you know, uh, Kobe and Shaq, it's the fourth quarter, five seconds left and they hit a game winner. That's how I was cheering. So that was my personal favorite moment of the RNC. Now, Mike Pence had a good segment here because he went to the birthplace of Abraham Lincoln in Kentucky. And he was talking to the American people about a variety of different things. And, and the cinematography, the music, all of that was beautiful. I'm saying like, uh, this should be a documentary. It should be a box DVD set. I hope, and they probably will come out with it like that. I'm going to buy it instantly just for 
I ain't even gonna watch it. I just wanna have it like in the curio cabinet just to show my people. It's like, look, I got that. That was the best RNC that I've ever seen, which it was. But anyway, he was in front of Abraham Lincoln's house speaking to random people, you know, American people. And one little boy that he brought out there, you may have seen before. Uh, remember that clip from, I think it might have been a year or two ago with the little boy who was like trying to hug Trump but being kind of shy? I mean, that was a really beautiful moment. Um, that kid was there for the signing of the Right to Try Act, which is when you're able to try certain drugs that have not been approved by the FDA if you're terminal or you have some kind of rare illness. The little boy has Duchenne muscular dystrophy, which is fatal. Um, people that have it may live at the max until they get to be in their 30s and 40s, but sometimes they, they end up passing away before they turn 25 or 26. So he has a degenerative illness and a lot of the treatments that he was able to get, he was afforded the opportunity to have because of the Right to Try Act. All right. So that was a really beautiful moment, a great moment. And again, the cinematography, the music, all of that was A1000. Another great moment here was the naturalization ceremony. Uh, five people that were becoming American citizens were naturalized in the White House with Alex Azar and Donald Trump. OK, Trump spoke to him each individually post for pictures that was a really good moment a great moment it was about 10 minutes or so long talking about legal immigrants and what they bring to society keyword legal 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 now the democrats could do a thing like that they could highlight legal immigrants they could have a naturalization ceremony they could do something to that effect but they don't want to do that okay i was seeing the left on twitter talking about oh he's using them as props he doesn't really care all this that and the third that's what they're saying but see they want to attack them and attack trump because they don't like legal immigrants they want illegal aliens that they can't convert into citizens to have them vote for the democratic party so they're able to continue to stay in power okay they see the black vote starting to drift away all right so they're trying to get new voters and new people that will be subservient to the democratic party in general but that was a beautiful moment to see legal immigrants become legal rather than illegal aliens be champion have all kind of specials documentaries about them that was a great moment now daniel cameron the attorney general from kentucky he spoke for a while he did a really good job He's black, and I met him one time briefly. You know, really nice guy, kind, smile on his face. Uh, matter of fact, that was at Black Voices Drunk where I met him. But anyway, uh, he spoke for a while, and I like how he totally roasted Joe Biden for the you ain't black and um, all these comments, all these racial comments about black people, how we're not diverse. He's like, look at me. Look at me right here. I'm diverse. I am what you say that we're not. Or I may be a quote unquote notable exception. But anyway, that, I added that last part. He didn't say that part. But he had a really good talk. I appreciated him. Um, but unfortunately, I went to Twitter and I'm reading, and everybody kept saying, uh, arrest Breonna Taylor's killers. And I asked them, well, why should he do that? And nobody has an answer. I feel like the whole thing about Breonna Taylor has become a meme. But that, that's, that's a whole different story. So I digress. The night ended with Melania Trump out there in the Rose Garden to an audience, people that are in the White House. Um, Trump was out there, Pence, everybody in the Rose Garden. No masks, no distancing. It was a great sight to see. Uh, again, beautiful cinematography. It was at night. The lighting was right. She looked great with the army green uh, jacket and dress or whatever she had on with the heels. Fantastic. Um, she outlined a lot of her humanitarian efforts that the be best movement she's speaking about racial problems in society and she came from a, a very feminine point of view and also a point of view that women can relate to all right because a lot of the things were kind of emotional or you know from the heart and that's where women i think do better than men is with emotional matters men i feel like do better with straight facts straight figures x y and z making decisions but women are better at emotional things and she was able to come out there and do that with strength though at the same time not just weak like a sovereign pile of tears, but she was really good. And it was a pretty lengthy speech and I appreciated her speech. Of course, there were some haters talking about her accent, which is weird because they'll say, oh, Trump's racist, but then you, you mock her for her Slovenian accent, really interesting. 
But again, she looked great, had a great speech, and the setting was beautiful out there in the Rose Garden that night. It was fantastic. So the RNC, it was great. Uh, I mean, this was really good, but I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? Did you enjoy the RNC like I did? Did you watch it? Whatever your viewpoints are in order, let me know in the comments below. Or did you not enjoy the RNC? If you, if you didn't, let me know why. Did you not watch it intentionally? If that's your viewpoint, let me know why in the comments. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. I feel like this is a blueprint on how the RNC and the DNC should be going forward. The DNC should take notes. You know, this whole Zoom call, third grade, PowerPoint presentation level of effort is really absurd and it's inexcusable because they got the money. Don't don't have no green screen random performance of a dude with stains on his shirt. I'm not really trying to see that. You got plenty of money after George Floyd got popped. You got plenty of money coming into your coffers. I think they said Joe Biden raised like $45 million in a month after George Floyd. You got the money, so what are you even doing? What's up with this low-level, low-budget um, business conference type stuff? Okay, I'm told the Democrats were the ones that had all the innovation, all the creativity, all the arts and whatnot. I can't tell. I cannot tell. The artistic talent, the production quality was on the side of the Republicans, period. All right, that's just the reality of it. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.